Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. I'm recording a video today to talk to you about training and the fact that we have to constantly learn. Unless you're retiring next week, you're probably going to be spending some time learning. I too find myself in that same situation. I have to learn. I have to constantly be expanding my skill set, knowing more, doing more, and learning more. And I'm getting started with Postgres. Now, before we keep going and I talk about some of the details of what I'm doing, make sure you hit the like, make sure you hit the subscribe, make comments down below, and uh, my kids tell me I have to say, ring the bell. So make sure you ring the bell. Anyway, what I'm doing is I'm setting up a Postgres database so I can start learning Postgres as a, as a methodology. But I'm not just going to set it up on Linux. What I'm going to do is set up a hybrid environment. I'm going to use Azure to host my database, and then I'm going to use my local Linux laptop to manipulate and control that database. So I'm going to have mix in some of, some of my learning from two directions. I'm going to be learning Linux and learning some methodologies in and around Linux, and I'm going to be learning Postgres. Let's go check out how I'm getting that done. These are my resource groups on my Azure account. And the one we're going to focus on initially here is the Learning Postgres Resource Group. I strongly recommend that you create resource groups, especially while you're training and teaching and learning all this stuff, because when you mess up, you want to be able to clean up easily. And putting whatever you're testing into a resource group, all you have to do is drop that resource group and it drops everything inside of it. So it makes it a great way to um, do testing and, and training and stuff. So first up, what we want to do is add to this resource group. So we're going to go over here and click Add. With that, we want to add, um, we're going for PostgreSQL. So PostgreSQL, let's do a search. And if you look right here, Azure Database for PostgreSQL. So let's go ahead and click on that. We're going to click Create. Now, when we create it, it's going to require us to create a server for storing this. So we have, you know, give it pretty much anything, but we'll call it um, video training is what we'll call it for now. Um, you have to have a subscription. I've got several possible subscriptions. I'm going to go with my Azure sponsorship. You have to put it into a resource group. You can create the resource group here. But what happens if you do that is a lot of times as you're creating multiple things, you'll create multiple resource groups. And then when you go to clean up, you'll have multiple resource groups to clean up instead of just one to, to nuke everything. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I put everything in the learning Postgres so there's more than one place. Now, you can create from a backup. Um, I don't have one available at the moment, but we're going to do blank. Also, by the way, you can use um, um, command line interface or PowerShell to get all this done. I'll try to set up another video where I do PowerShell from my laptop up to Azure to make controls off that. But for now, we're just going to use what's, the, what's here. Let me create a login and password. And you can see that I have to make sure that it's actually a good password and that it matches, and it does. Then you pick your location, and I mean, and that's just going to matter for wherever you're at. The number of locations we have now is just insane. Um, so you can get it wherever you need it to have it. I'm going to go ahead and st stick with East US 2 for now. Um, you also get to pick the version, and then you can pick the pricing tier. Let me go ahead and click on this so you can see the various pricing tiers. Now, if you're just doing training, very simplistic training, you may want to go with basic. Um, keep it real simple. Keep it very, very cheap um, for while you're training. Um, but... If you need performance, you may want to go with higher stuff, or you may even move up into memory optimized and have all that, you know, additional things. For now, I'm going to go with real low, um, vCore, 50 gigs, um, backup retention, seven days, although you can adjust that. All of these things are adjustable, and you can just do more, but you have to pay more. So basically, I'm going to go with this one for now. It's locally redundant. There's not a whole lot else to it. Click OK. So the actual cost on this will be $66 a month um, for this really simple um, Postgres database that I'm creating. Now we're going to click Create. And then that's going to take a minute or two to create. So we're just going to pause stuff for now, and we'll come back to it once it's complete. So it's created my server. We've got the server now video training. Let's go and take a look at that. 
Now, first thing is, is that we want to know what the server name, this is all our connection string. So we can copy this so we can get at it, right? We want to be able to get at this server. Now, we know what the login and password is because we supplied that ourselves when we created it. But we're going to want to be able to connect up to this. Now, the databases that you have under management are right down here. It creates one called Postgres. It's the first one it creates. It's there available. They've got a couple of others. And you can create more and manage them as you need to. It's totally within your control. But, you know, initially there's a default settings and that's what it has. Now, the one thing we're going to need to do is ensure that since I want to try to connect from my laptop up to the cloud, I need to ensure that I can get to the cloud. And one of the things that's always there is there's going to be a firewall problem. So I'm going to go straight to connection security first. And now I, from there, I can add my client IP address. Now, you can see it's already captured what it is. There's the name for it. There's my start and end IP, so it's got my local IP address. And if I hit save now, that's going to update the security and ensure that if I attempt to connect to this from my own system, um, that I can, in fact, do that. So once, this, once the firewall is done, let's switch back over to um, the terminal window. Now, if you want to get the Postgre client, this is what you want to get. It's a sudo apt-get install Postgre SQL client. Now, I've already run it, so I'm not going to run it again. There's nothing really there. Um, but what we do have to do is psql-h, and then we've got to make sure that we paste in the server name that we uh, have. Now, our database, we already know, is Postgres. And then it's grant at, and you can, and you can check what it is to be sure, but it's grant at video training is my login. You can see it right there. So grant at video training. Now that should let me get in, especially since I've already set up the IP address. If I had not, I would get a login error not preventing me. So now what we have to do is put in the correct password and we're logged in and we're there. We've got everything we need. So we could, you know, create table X ID integer and it's got a table. Yeah, and we do have to make sure we put in a semicolon. And if we try select star from X, there's no rows. So insert X ID uh, values 1. Oh, syntax error. Um, insert into X. Again, I said, like I said, I'm learning this. Maybe it uses slightly different syntax than what I'm used to. Oh, that worked. So now let's try select star from X, and off we go. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a Postgres SQL database on Azure. I can access and control through my local terminal, through my local client, and um, it was silly easy. So it's a lot of fun to be able to learn something new and do it simply. Now don't go away, I've got a couple more points to make. Make sure you hit that like, make sure you hit that subscribe and ring the bell. But anyway, before we go, two more points. One, the reason I'm doing Azure is the hybrid is the future. That's the way a lot of things are gonna be going. It's the way so many people are gonna be getting things done. And so by taking this hybrid approach as I learn, I'm ensuring that I'm spending the time and effort to find out and track down the things that I need to know ahead of time rather than discovering them after the fact. Two, it just makes things easy. Using Azure, especially because I've got Visual Studio or I've got you know several different hosted accounts, I, I can get access to it for free. There's nothing keeping me from getting in there and it makes things so much easier. I don't have to do so many installs and configurations on my local laptop to get things going. I can spin stuff up nice, quick and simple and then do my training in a place that I can then throw it all away when I'm done as needed and, and with very minimal cleanup time and, and very minimal effort. So it makes things a lot easier. That's it. My name's Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.